Have you ever noticed the difference between how a dolphin and a shark swims? As dolphins swim, they move their tail fluke up and down, rather than from side to side like a shark. This is because whales evolved from walking land mammals whose backbones don't bend from side to side as they moved. Instead, the backbone of the ancestors, which were like a hippo, undulated up and down. Although modern cetaceans have no hind limbs, those early cetaceans, about 50 million years ago, had the typical mammalian four limbs with large feet and a long tail. So they were land mammals that spent time paddling in the water. Newer whale forms spent more time in the water and their bodies changed. Species appeared that swam by undulating their whole body up and down, using their tail for propulsion. This meant that their limbs were no longer needed for paddling. In fact, having the elbow joints lock meant that the forelimbs as stiff planes, as pectoral flippers, helped stabilise their body as it moved forwards through the water. So in today's cetaceans, like this dolphin, the bones in the pectoral flipper are held together firmly by connective tissue and cartilage so that the front limbs are now stiffened. And the surface area is expanded with fibrous connective tissue to become a pectoral flipper. The bones within the pectoral flippers are comparable to ours, but the humerus and ulna are shortened. In fact, most of the bones you see here in the dolphin's pectoral flippers are phalanges, the finger bones, and they have way more finger bones than we do. So typically in mammals, including us, we have three finger bones in each of our fingers and toes, except for our thumbs and our big toe. They have just two. But this dolphin has eight finger bones, but some cetaceans can have up to 12 phalanges, unlike any other mammal. This is called hyperphalange, and it's not only the cetaceans that did this, the flippers of long extinct marine reptiles, the mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, and plesiosaurs, also had lots more finger bones than the typical vertebrate pattern. Now the hind limbs of the ancient whales were no longer needed, and they reduced in size, but over eons. They were still present, but very small in many of the ancient whale forms. Until about 35 million years ago, they were completely lost. The pelvis for us is an important structure for our hind limbs. But whales were no longer using their hind limbs and their pelvis reduced. And as you can see here on this dolphin, it also separated from the backbone. So the pelvis in the dolphin is an example of a vestigial structure. It's still there, but there's no longer a purpose. Now, the tail's no longer long and whip-like. It's broadened to a stiff plane to increase the surface area so that they have a large, broad tail, just like that of a shark or a fish. Except it's in a completely different plane to that of a shark. It's horizontal, whereas a shark's tail fin is vertical. And where the tail fin of a fish is supported by bones, as you can see here, there's no bones in this dolphin's tail fluke. The cetacean's fluke is actually made up of tough connective tissue and it's flexible. The fluke becomes stiffer as the dolphins swim faster. So stiffening the surface of the fluke increases the swimming efficiency at high speeds. So that broad surface of their tail fluke works like a wing. It generates lift forces directly forwards so that as the fluke moves both on the upstroke and the downstroke, thrust pushes the dolphin forwards through the water. So another group of marine mammals, the pinnipeds, the seals, sea lions and walruses, they do something completely different. They have a different land ancestor and their backbones can bend from side to side as they move. The first seals and sea lions use their fore flippers to produce thrust. They swim in a similar way to penguins and sea turtles. Their fore flippers are large and they row them through the water in a, in a clapping motion and followed by a prolonged glide before the next stroke. But their hind flippers act only as stabilizers. But notice how on both the hind flippers and the fore flippers can support them up, up on land. But notice how their fore flippers and hind flippers support their body. Their hind flippers can face forwards under their body, so they can walk using all four limbs, so they're still agile when moving on land. 
the seals and walruses are different. Notice here on this seal, its hind flippers can't move forwards. This means that on land they're clumsy. Out of water they bounce along using only their foreflippers. But in the water they swim by moving their pelvis, moving it from side to side. So their hind flippers and their whole lower body moves more like a fish. So their smaller foreflippers are used mainly for steering. But as always in biology, there are some exceptions. And the leopard seal can row with their foreflippers like a fur seal, as well as using their hind flippers, moving them side to side like a typical seal. So marine mammals use different ways to get around. Where the pinnipeds are tied to moving both on land as well as the water, and use their limbs, which became flippers for swimming, the fully aquatic whales switch to using tail propulsion only.